Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you about another form of energy harvesting. Uh, you may have not heard so much of this one. Usually when we look into things like RF and power lines and ways to get a little bit from that, you know, from what's in the air, totally legit, by the way, because you're not climbing power systems and running your own wires. If you can set up a simple diode circuit and a loop and thin and pull a few microvolts, all the power to you, literally. So with that said, we're usually very familiar with the inductive methods, but I'd like to talk to you about the capacitive coupling as well. And just for fun, I started doing some math just, you know, with some calculators and a few programs here. And to, to sum it up in the very small um, basic details, because if I would actually extend all these formulas, uh, I would need like several boards. But to keep things simple here, it really fascinated because, you know, we start off with, uh, with capacitive coupling. You've got to calculate your capacitance, obviously, which is in relevance to the frequency, so 60 hertz in our case, because we're dealing with the power lines. And then after that, we've got to figure out our capacitive reactance values which I did at to be 394.6 ohms. That's assuming, you know, in my system here, in my example, I'm using 25 feet of a um, capacitive coupling. So basically a strip plate of a metal stretched 25 feet, and we're assuming we're a distance of 75 feet from a power line source at 60 hertz. So this is for our area anyway, it's a worst case scenario because we have the overhead wires and some people are as close to 25 feet from these things. So I decided to do the math for the worst case scenario considering 25 feet. So here we are with our reactive capacitance, then we use regular Ohm's law to find out what current value that is. And for the power factor using the Ohm's law, and I'm assuming 50 volts that we're able to, this is part actually is the induction. So 50 volts is what we're able to receive through a system which I'll get into later which could be a tuned loop antenna or any um, i rather use the uh, power strip option, I'll tell you about that. But anyways, this is just to show you like in the air we can get a total of 6.33 watts of power output if we could figure out a mechanism to actually couple through this and this is how I do it, and uh, this is the, um, the example again is 25 feet and 75 feet, so we get 6.33 watts, but of course that's with a resistive load of around 100 ohms, so the math could drive to something, you know, I need to include a load in there. That could be, um, for example, uh, if you're running a device or charging a battery, whatever. Anyhow, you're probably saying that's nice, he's got the basic math here, but how can you actually build an application where you, you know, doing the math is one thing, but that's what led me to think, is when I saw this, and I said, my goodness, it's not a lot, it's 6.33, but it's basically a form of wasted energy. I don't know about you folks, but the people around my town were exposed to this in all of our backyards, so it's like... Well, if I could build something about the same length of a solar panel, instead it's a conductive plate that's acting as a capacitor and through wireless capacitive coupling alone you can get this much power. That would what I know in my various trigger circuits. I could use this as a good trigger and even find a way to make this even more efficient. And I came up with a few methods and I will explain to you how basically you can extract a good amount from the mains power using this method without actually touching or having to build a specific electrical circuit where you could actually danger yourself with having to water your house or anything like that with true to mind, true to mains lines direct rather than wirelessly coupled. So it won't be obviously as efficient as being directly plugged into it, but if we could improve this, let's say we can go below, uh, above 10 watts or more then it's really worth looking into considering it's, it's essentially wasted in the near field in everyone's backyard. So any extra source of power we can use is better than nothing folks. So now that I showed you the, the, the reasoning behind what I want to do, let me show you how a system like this could actually be implemented. Alright folks, here is the best way this could work. So here's your power line, for example, 
and we're roughly 75 feet away from the power line here. And underneath, or nearby, we have our 25 feet plate, which is acting as part of a capacitor. This is going to be one plate, and in our case, the power line be conductor being the second plate. Now, how do we utilize this? Simply ground one side and connect our positive to the capacitor and all of a sudden this forms this is an easy way to get our capacitive coupling a voltage should appear a pretty good one actually and um, this is where our 6.33 watts of potentially or around there would come from now this on its own may seem even though you can do this it may not be the most efficient because you may arguably say well I'm just going to use a solar instead and screw the whole troubles with this yeah that's true but my point is if a lot of people have this field in their backyards and they can utilize it with just a 25 feet plate and get some actual wattage out of it why not it's an additional system that's just wasted basically in the near field of these power lines they really will not receive much of this. This is very similar to capacitive coupling. And um, that horse has left the barn a long time ago with all of the um, capacitor power supplies for your USB charging and wireless chargers, which basically work on a less complicated, more closed version of exactly these principles. I'm just taking it one step further and saying, hey, we can do this to grab you know what we would consider a polluting field in our backyards so there's a way of doing it but knowing things that we know we can maximize this for example if we were to introduce right here our own local oscillator so we'll label it LO okay and we also run it at 60 Hertz okay so the way capacitive coupling works if you do the mathematical formulas i showed you earlier the way the power output gets increased is primarily the ratio of the voltage it can induce through the system in part right so what happens is the more voltage the more if you do the formula the more current output the capacitive coupling system will gain you so taking that trick into consideration, we build a local oscillator that acts as a bait trigger. So what's going to happen is we could make this one actually very high voltage but low current just by design. So if we really feel like it, we could inject a 200 volts AC sine wave and that will be at 60 hertz and we inject that, we'll use an isolation transformer here. We're going to draw the transformer. One side goes to ground, the other side goes to our capacitor plate. So what's that going to happen now is we're going to inject a bait signal and our capacitor plate all of a sudden is going to see, quote unquote see, a much higher AC voltage at 60 Hertz but will be capacitively coupled to our power line. This will allow us to extract a lot more energy and power output that's available in the power line that we would normally be able to couple into. So what I'm getting at is this is a way to bait the system into more efficient coupling through the power line without actually having to bring our capacitive plate maybe 25 feet to get the same effect we could trigger it with a bait signal and increase It's basically an electrical way of shortening the distance between the plates so if you can understand that trick you know you could increase your six watts we were talking about here to maybe 10 20 or even 30 if it's all a matter of synchronizing the bait signal with the 60 Hertz of the AC so you're going to have to probably have a scope nearby with a passive loop here on the scope to monitor the AC waveform so you could turn your local oscillator on so that it's in sync because what's going to happen is if for some strange reason you're in opposite phase your local oscillator is going to cancel out instead of enhance so you're going to get a negative instead you know you're not going to get you're canceling it out so the phase relation is very important but you could easily solve that issue by 
seeing it for yourself on the scope and making sure you may even build additional advanced circuits which could have their own inductive loop nearby and through a phase like a PLL kind of circuit send it back into your local oscillator and you would never have to worry about phase relation the circuit would that that's an advanced circuitry you can come up with that on your own I'm just giving you the example here and taking this one step further folks if you understand how well capacitive coupling works we can if we don't have a power line no problem I'll explain to you another way we could potentially extract power here now here's a similar setup but if you're lucky enough and you own a farm field or massive property you could extend a quarter mile or more capacitive plate near a few feet above the ground level here and that becomes a capacitive coupling plate and then you have the ground as well now what we're doing is we're using the Earth's magnetic field instead the Schumann resonance so what we're going to do is that on its own is not because it's such low wavelength it's not going to give you much current but it's going to be more than enough to create a capacitive coupling so what we do here is we include a specialized RX and a PLL control circuit on its own passive loop if you could get it a quarter mile as well because what happens with the earth fields they variate with natural phenomenon, storms, lightnings, whatever so it would be very tricky to build like a solid state oscillator and program it on one setting because phase is really a requirement for the capacitive coupling but if we have another uh, kind of PLL circuit nearby, a sync circuit, which can control a local oscillator and keep it at the right frequency in the same phase relationship, we could inject a much more powerful um, in voltage, but not current, but it's going to trick the system into coupling into the Earth much, much more as a whole, we understand. Tesla tried to do this because he believed there was a big potential in the Earth's magnetic field. Well, there's a way to use capacitive coupling, in theory anyways, if you would have such a big field to conduct a similar experiment. Again, you would probably do as well with solar, but um, just exploring different varieties and ideas that could work, folks. So, take it for what it is and let me know what you think and have yourselves a great day.